Hi, my name is Lavinia and this is Peter's Tale today. Welcome to Games Made Easier channel to learn board games quickly and easily. Today, I want to teach you and give you tips on how to play scenarios 3 and 4 and the full version of Catan Explorers and Pirates. A gripping expansion that takes Catan to a whole new level of gaming, but still stays true to Catan. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Before we start, if you're not familiar with Catan Explorers and Pirates Scenarios 1 and 2, I suggest you watch my video here because you will need it to understand the more advanced rules. Now let's look at the third scenario, Fish for Catan. This scenario, you use the same rules as in the Pirate Lairs, except now we have Fish Shoals and the Council of Catan. For this scenario, you can start with the same preset island as in the previous scenario, or you can place the terrain hexes randomly like that. Whichever way you prefer, you must always place the numbers as shown here. Build the frame exactly as in Pirate Lairs, but replace D1 with D2, the Council of Catan. Remove two C hexes and one gold hex from the orange sun and replace them with three orange sunfish shoal hexes. Remove the two C hexes from the green moon pile and replace them with two random green moon fish shoal hexes. Shuffle each pile without looking at them and randomly place each pile like this. Since you use the gold hex from Pirate Lairs, place the pile of Pirate Lair tokens, the mission card and victory point card as usual. Add the fish tokens, the mission card and the victory point card for fish of Catan near the board. Give the same game pieces and add gold to the players and add one additional mission token. Place both mission markers for each player on the starting space of each mission board. You are ready now to start. The game starts like the free setup option in the Pirate Lairs. Now, there's an extra mission card that allows you to score points when you catch fish and you deliver it to the Council of Catan. The Council of Catan is an island just off the shore of the starting island. While ships can move between the starting island and the Council of Catan, it is considered to be close enough to the starting island that you can build a road on this edge or even build a settlement here or here. You cannot build a road on the other five edges or build a settlement on the other four intersections. These two docks marked here and here are where your ship needs to connect to unload its fish hull. Now let's look at how you secure Catanian's food supply by discovering fish shoals, catching as much fish as possible, and delivering these holes to the docks. You discover a fish shoal when you reveal a sun or moon fish shoal hex during your movement phase. Collect your two gold and you may roll a die. If the die matches the die on a discovered fish shoal hex, and that hex does not already have a fish token or a pirate ship, take a fish hole from the supply and place it on this hex. If your roll does not match any available discovered hex, next turn you can roll again before or after your movement and try to place a fish hole. You cannot roll in the middle of your movement, also you can only roll once per turn. If there is no more fish hole in the supply, you cannot roll anymore. Now let's have a look at how we catch that fish hole. In your turn, if either end of one of your empty ships touches a fish shoal hex, take the fish hole and place it on your ship. If your ship is out on the open sea, it has access to four hexes. If your ship carries something else, you can throw it overboard before loading the fish. The fish fills the ship's hold, so a ship can only carry one fish hole at a time. You can continue moving if you have movement points left. If you discover a new hex and end your ship's movement, you can still load a fish hole into the same ship from an adjacent fish hex. Remember that the pirate can also catch fish holes. If the pirate is placed on a fish hole hex that contains a fish hole, remove it and return it to the supply. However, the pirate cannot steal the ship hole from a player's ship. You don't need movement points to load your fish hole into the ship. Now, let's have a look at how you deliver the holes. 
If one of your ships carrying fish touches one of the docks on the council of Catan Island, you may unload that ship. Return the fish haul to the supply and move your marker up one space on the Fish for Catan mission card. If you still have ship movements, you can continue to move just like when you catch the fish. The first player to reach 15 victory points during their turn is declared the winner. Now let's have a look at the fourth scenario, the spices for Catan. In this scenario, you're going to use the same rules as fish for Catan, but you're going to replace the components of pirate lairs and include the spice hexes and the spice tokens. For this scenario, start with the same components as the random setup of scenario 3 and build the frame exactly as in Fish for Catan, but extend it by replacing the B1 frame pieces by B2 pieces instead. Also add the G piece here. For the Green Moon pile, replace all three pirate layer hexes with the Green Moon spice hexes Add the third fish shawl hex and one MTC hex. For the orange sun pile, replace the two pirate layer hexes with the three orange sun spice hexes and one MTC hex. Shuffle each pile without looking at them and randomly place each pile like this. Shuffle and place each pile of green, moon and orange sun tokens here and here. Since you do not use the gold hexes from Pirate Lairs, put the Pirate Lair tokens, the mission card and victory point card back in their bag. Add the Spice mission card and the victory point card for Spice of Catan near the board. Give the same game pieces and gold to the players. You're ready to start. The game plays like Fish for Catan, but now you can collect spices to deliver them to the Council of Catan to score additional mission points. For this mission, your crew represents merchants who will trade spices. After you've discovered a spice hex, receive two gold and place as many spice sacks on the hex as there are players. If you have a crew on that ship, you can place the merchant on the village of the spice hex and swap the spice sack with the crew. Note that the spice must be placed on the ship where the crew came from, even if you have another ship nearby. Like fish, you don't need movement points to load a spice sack onto your ship. The only requirement is that your ship with one of your crew on it either points to a spice hex or stand on a sea route adjacent to that spice hex. Also like fish, crew or settlers, you can transfer a spice sack from a ship into a harbour basin and from there load them into another ship. You cannot place more than one crew per spice hex and it will stay there until the end of the game. Now, these uh, spice hexes also give you game advantages. Let's have a look at the three types of them. With the first one, Swift Voyage, all your ships now gain one extra move per turn. If you have merchants in both these villages, your ships can move six per turn, eight if you pay a sheep. This can be immediately applied to the ship who delivered the crew if it's not the ship that discovered it even if that ship had already used up all its movement points. The second advantage is fast gold. If you have a merchant in one of these villages, once per turn you can sell one resource card from your hand for one gold. And if you have merchants on both villages, you can do this twice per turn. The third advantage is the pirate bonus. Now you have one extra chance to chase away the pirate as you can chase it away with not just a six, but also a four or a five depending on the village. And if you have merchants on both villages, you chase away the pirate on 4, 5 and 6. Also, note that you can build and upgrade settlements on a spice hex only when you've already placed a crew on it. It doesn't add any special advantage apart from the normal points. Like fish, the spice sacks need to be delivered to the Council of Catan docks. You do this by one of your ships touching a dock and then you move up the mission track. The first player to reach 15 victory points in their turn is declared the winner. Now let's look at scenario 5, the full game of Explorers and Pirates. In this game, you're going to use all three missions and you're going to use all the elements of the Pirate Layers, the Fish for Catan and Spices for Catan's components. For this scenario, build the starting island with the free setup but still keep fixed numbers. Build a frame as in Spices for Catan but further extend it by adding the 2B1 frame pieces. 
Also add one orange sun sea hex face up between G and the frame like that. Remove one green moon sea hex. Use the same components as Spices for Catan and add the Pirate Lair mission components as now you play with all three missions. For each pile you should have seven standard hexes, three fish shawl hexes, three spice hexes and three pirate lair hexes. Shuffle each pile without looking at them and randomly place each pile like this. Shuffle and place each pile of green moon and orange sun tokens here and here. Place all three mission cards and the victory point cards near the board. Give the same game pieces and gold to the players, but now they take all three tokens and place them on the starting space of all three missions. You are ready to start. The game plays like all three previous scenarios, so let me recap some of the rules that might not have been clear previously. Remember the general rule that if you discover a hex that doesn't have an associated resource card, like when you discover a sea, fish, pirate layers, or a spice hex, you collect two gold. Remember that gold does not count as a resource. So if as a result of the production roll, a player only collects gold, that player will receive one extra gold as a compensation for not collecting resources. Roads may be built on all paths, both inland and along the coast. At the shore, roads can be parallel to ships, meaning that up to one road plus two ships may simultaneously occupy a path on the coast. Also, a settler doesn't count as a victory point, not even if it's on a ship. Only settlements, harbour settlements and the mission progress count as victory points. Finally, since crews can be moved at any time, you may move crews several times during a turn. The first player to reach 17 victory points during their turn is declared the winner. My tips to win at Catan Explorers and Pirates are start by watching the tips I gave on my first video of Catan Explorers and Pirates because they apply here as well. In mid-game, it can be interesting to build a settlement in the starting island, especially if it has wool. It can be an extra powerful point. If you have two ships, one carrying crew and the other one a settler, it can be technically possible to capture the pirate lair and build a settlement in the gold hex on the same turn. When fishing, you don't have to roll, it's a choice. So when you do, be careful of other players because once you've rolled and you put the fish hole on the hex, it has to go there so another player could get hold of it. Gold is very important and having too many distribution of numbers can limit the amount of gold you make. You need to plan ahead when you play with all three missions, which you play first and anticipate what the next requirements will be. So that's how you play the complete Catan Explorers and Pirates expansion. It is definitely the way to play the game. It becomes quite competitive and tense when you play with all three missions. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe or leave in the comments a game you'd like me to teach. I'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.